Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Let's start by dealing with the stronghold. A Wrath of Ashes. Uh, it's from main inventory. Okay, so I just got the information about the payday. Okay, that's fine. Let's say hi to you. I just want to find her. Surely even you can understand that. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. Who's that? Hail and well met. The innkeeper digs inside the mug with a dirty rag. His eyes under his thick brows are tired but watchful. He gives you a quick nod as you approach the bar. Don't see many travelers these days. Something I can do for you? What was your exchange with that nobleman about? He looks up from pushing his tankard and glowers at the lord. Folk around here descend. They mind their own business. You want to stick your nose in it? Go talk to him yourself. I have questions about Deerford then. He runs his rag around the rim of the mouth. Ask. Uh, have you seen an ornament called Nifra? He jerks his head at the stairs. Tweet your lady. That one. Uh, who lives in Deerford? Not many anymore. Hard to keep people around with everyone here's birthing hollowborn. But we got a few who stick around and do business. Tyrkil is the letter courier. Hendina crafts potions. And Winfrith trades in general goods. Rumble's pick a farmer. Or was, anyway. Tell me about Trigil. He's a courier. He treats leather and makes armor and a few other goods with it. Problem is, the smell of tallow and deer shit tends to put people off their food. And his shop's right next door. What's Hedrina's story? Lady's a clever hand with potions and poultices. Got herself into trouble with nest of worms. Or so I heard. Her car is in the east end of town. Okay, and Winfirf? Been around even longer than I have. Nice enough fellow, but never could find his way to end of a sentence. His shops are across the square. Something happened to Rumble's pigs, I take it. Damn, <laughs> Ogre carried them off. Now he squeals more than his hair ever did, he shrugs. It is rotten luck. Hmm. Let's go back a little bit. Uh, about that Ogre. You don't see, hardly see him this close to town. Ogres and kith don't mix well. Ugly but they're smart enough to know that much. You want to know more, Dr. Rumbles? Okay. Um, you said you don't see many travelers. Of course not. Why would they come here? We got bandits on the road and an ogre in the forest. As that yapping fool Rumbles will tell you. Worse yet, hasn't been a healthy child born here in over a year. Most kith that come here is just passing through. Okay, let's talk about something else. Um, or nothing about Aeon? Why, it's you! Thank you, friend. You've given me another chance and I mean to make the most of it. I've been telling everyone around here about how you helped me. Oh, you're welcome. I think this is the guy we've paid. Hello! The man wears eider style robes. Simple, but elegant. His fine leather shoes look like they were made for padding around indoors, yet they're caked with mud. He hangs at the lock of hair twined around his silky gloved finger. His fine features are etched with anxiety. My child is out there. Do they not understand? My lord, we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, these villagers... Beasts take them all. I don't care how you do it, but find her. I heard you arguing with the innkeeper. A petty, small-minded man. Just like the rest of them around here. I've been paying him an honest fee for board and bed, and yet he can't be bothered to stir himself to concern for my Alice. Your child is missing, I take it. Yes, Lady Alice. My daughter. 
he tags at the fingertips of his gloves. I've asked around, but nobody in this mud hole has any concerns beyond their swine. They turn my men away like beggars and seem downright pleased to be of no use. But you, you're not one of my soldiers. And you look like you're used to getting your hands dirty, if you don't mind my saying so. Well, I do mind, but go on. His guard is in. My lord, I... Harun raises a hand to silence the man. If you find her, he nibbles the thumb of one so close. Tell her I won't be upset with her. She can come back and all will be well. I just want to make sure my Alice, my child, is safe. Nothing in the world is more important to me. Okay, but I would like to ask a few questions about your daughter. Elise, of course. Describe Lady Elise. She's a striking young woman, bears more resemblance to her, of her, to her mother than to me. She has auburn hair and delicate, well-bred features. She must be oh, 28 or 29 now. Tell me about her disappearance. We'd stopped in there for a few days. On our fourth evening here, I was making plans to continue our journey. Lady Alice was feeling unwell and went to bed. When I retired, Retired a couple hours later, I found that she had vanished. None of my men had seen her go, and no one at the inn knew where she was. Since then, my people have been combing the village, but we've yet to find a clue, and the locals have been no help. Why did you and Alice come to Deerford? It was merely a stop along the way to Aina's rest. However, she took ill shortly before arrival, so it seemed prudent to allow her a few days to recover. What's an anus rest? He frowns as if about to protest, but he gives him a sigh. <sighs> Lady Alice has reached an age where it is prudent for her to marry. Given this legacy business, I can't let her fertile years slip by, nor do I want her womb to fester in the presence of so many war. It seems there would be more potential suitors in New Hyoma or New Yarma. You think I haven't considered that? Arranging a suitable match is difficult. The best prospects for my child lay in Aina's rest. Where's the rest of your family? Surely they wouldn't want to miss your daughter's befortal. Lady Heron is ill-suited for travel, I'm afraid. And, unfortunately, Alice has few other close relatives. My sister and her husband, Alice's aunt and uncle, of course, have been visiting Adair these past months. He wraps his knuckles. And as for siblings, Alice has none. My wife has only given birth to Holoborn since, since Alice, that is. I see, but going back to your daughter, though, what about her? Nothing? Tell me about yourself. I'm Lord Nestor Harren of Defiance Bay. My family has been prominent there since Imperial times. Our primary estate is on the outskirts of Brackenbury, but we have holdings in New Haomar as well. Those went to my sister and her husband. Okay, goodbye then. Yeah. Oh, you have a name. Oh, never mind then. Oh, I wanted to change the, the layout of our team a little bit because the three of us Need something? are ranged. Who's coming up the stairs? Hello. The one hovers by the window, peering out of it every few seconds. As you enter the room, she watches you carefully, her hand hovering over her stiletto. She cranes her head to peer behind you. Anyone follow you? Who sent you? Mm. Who are you talking about? The man leaning against the wall glances out the door and nods to the Orlan. The hand over her once more relaxes, but she's still watching you closely. Some old friends from Defiance Bay are looking for me. We're not exactly friends anymore, if you catch my drift. 
I'm just trying to lay low and mind my own business. Know what I mean? Boss. And Omala looks at the Earl and jerks his head at you. Alright, alright. She raises a hand to the Omala before turning back to you. My friend here thinks you could maybe help us out. Now I'm sure you're a busy woman, so I'll make it worth your, while, your time. She flips you off your coins. Just go take a look around town. Come back and let me know if the ghost is clear or if you see any suspicious figures. You're pretty suspicious. What's this about? She scratches the back of her neck. I may have gotten myself into trouble with some powerful people in Defiance Bay. Powerful criminal people. I suppose it was bound to happen eventually. I'm a thief by trade, and it's hard to do my kind of business in the city without crossing them eventually. Now I'm just trying to put some distance between us. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but you don't seem like the type to run your mouth off. Someone told me you were responsible for heinous killings in the Fines Bay. Let me guess. Was that someone named Medref? She draws her stiletto. It's a lie. Plain and simple. I got on the wrong side of his employers and now he's after me. But if you're here to do his dirty work, I won't make it easy on you. Relax. I just want to hear your side of the story. What story? The deal man else came after me. I just happened to rip the wrong place. How was I supposed to know they would already claim it? She runs her hands under the hood and through her hair. It was an honest mistake. I'm just trying to survive now. And if you spoke with Medref, you know where he's waiting. Please, help me get out of here. Lois, Medref's waiting for you just west of the river. She nods slowly. Alright, I'm trusting you. Don't have much choice. See if you can send him the other way. That should buy me some more time. She follows the hooded figures toward the stairs, giving a final uncertain glance as she passes through the door. Hey. Let's see if she left something in here. Rise to power, copper skate, eh. Remember, it's not a crime unless you actually take something. Which is funny, funny enough. Ooh. I suppose it can't be helped. As long as I don't sure how I feel about this. Consider it a test. I'm helped? fine with it. My morals are non-existent. I mean, they. Are existing as you can see I won't steal anything that is considered stealing but mm. well they are flexible let's say let's go to this asshole hmm? oh it's some guard Hail, traveler. He picks up a long blade of grass. Found me for it. I'm ready to get out of here. She snuck out the back of the inn and went north. He squints at you, pulling the grass into two flimsy threads. Did she now? And how would you have known that? I was just hoping you'd believe me. Medred draws his blade. Don't worry, I'll catch up to her. Right after I take care of you. Honestly. Um, Your thoughts must flow deeply, indeed. Mm. Target gives an overview of a concussive blast of psychic energy, something wrong. Oh, okay, sure, let's try that on him. Quit okay, I don't want to do any weird stuff. You, what can you do? Uh, you, what? of course, can do this. 
Need something? Yeah, I think so. I don't know what. Okay. Moe Ixi Anana. Doesn't fight me. Something fighting. Lava beyond. Oh, we have four already. Oh, you had to do was believe me. Okay. Oh, of course, he's confused now. Then. In the Vale and Republic of Palmina, okay, the uh, military graveyard, okay. With the blessing of the Duchess of Palminia, Sagani began an earnest investigation of the vandalism at the military graveyard. After a large amount of digging, some literal, some figurative, Sagani was able to track down the solitary culprit, the grandson of a soldier who was executed for Corades in the Battle of Lagon Pirella. According to the young man, his grandfather was slandered and execution was not just. The Dacers of Pal and Palmina's son Greta Ducala reviewed the man's evidence and decided to restore his grandfather's dignity by inscribing his name on Lagon Pirella's memorial. However, the young man was still guilty of violating a long list of Palminian laws and customs. The Dacers exiled him from the island for life. Why do we have the ashes now? Why are they an item? Huh. There's that, there's the temple. Well, maybe they know something about the girl? You yeah, still don't want to talk with us. Mm, have you seen Lord he Heron's daughter? I'm afraid not. Lord Heron's men already asked me. And that was the first I would see of any of his party. He holds hand with heart. Wherever she is, in this place or another, I hope he takes comfort that her soul is with Eraf. People in town say that the Hollowborn problem has been especially bad here. It has. Cities and villages all over the Deerwood have seen Holoborn, but Deerford hasn't seen the birth of an unaffected child in years. Most of our people have moved on to other villages in search of hope, and those who have stayed behind aren't the same. Children promise a future, you know. People change when you take that away from them. Hmm. Change the triangle formation. Go. I won't. Hmm? What's your name? Durans. I always want to call him Duran, though. I watch too, man too much marathon lately. No, those are just villagers, so they won't help us. Maybe he knows something. Greetings. Have uh, seen any sign of Ailes Heron? His hands curl into noobie fists. How many times do I have to repeat myself? I already told those snooping guards I haven't seen her, but that hasn't kept him from nosing around my property. Need something else? Oosh. Those people really aren't helpful at all. Not even willing to be helpful. Well met, friend. I'm looking for a young woman named Elise. That lord's got you asking around too, eh? 
<clears throat> well, at least you ask politely enough. Bad enough having a small army move into town, but then they start throwing their weight around and telling you your business. He shakes his head and clucks. That's the problem with these lords. They think their money and their family name entitle them to some kind of special treatment. They expect everyone to fall over them the way their servants do. No, sir, that's not the kind of people we are, not in the Deerwood. We broke away from Adir to get away from that kind of nonsense. If they think. Um, ex um, I can certainly understand why you feel that way, but at the moment I'm just looking for his daughter. Of course, of course, uh, I was just getting to her. <clears throat> I haven't seen her. Not since she went missing, anyway. She mostly kept to herself. She, he shrugs and wipes at the buckler again. But you know how women are. Always carrying on, full on palaver once, and uh, any two of you get together. Perfectly harmless, mind you. I'm not criticizing. Just feels like you never run out of things to say. That girl seemed rather quiet. Downright shy, if I do say so. But even Hedina got her talking. Just goes to show you. And dinner? An alchemist uh, runs a small stand. Don't a lady, but she had a run in with some worms not long ago. She's lucky it wasn't that ogre that's been roaming about. He took all of Rumble's pigs the other day, did you hear? <laughs> but don't get him started. He's still sore about the subject. And once you get him wound up about that ogre and his pigs, he just won't stop talking. Okay. We do have some clues now. I wonder if it will help us anyway. Uh, she is here. Well met, friends. Um, actually, I'm looking for a missing nobleman. Oh, that's Lord Daughter. She was a new shade of green when I see her the other morning, chatting with Trig Trigil, she was, just outside his shop. She points at the crumbling tower. What was wrong with her? She tugs at the bandage. No offense, but I hardly know you. I'm not one for the for gossip and I certainly don't want to cause the poor girl any trouble. Lord Haran said she was ill from travel. That weren't no world sickness. <laughs> oh, trust me, I know it when I see it. Good day to you. Thank you. Oh, she already was pregnant. No, that's interesting. What can you tell me about Aelis Herent? He shrugs. Only that her father's men been banging down doors and stirring up trouble looking for her. I never met her myself. Hmm. Candina said you two had met. He folds his arms. The smell of tallow and animal dung wafting off of him. Did she? And what else did she say? She saw you two talking. What was it about? Her father's dragged her out here to get her to get hitched to some backward noble she wanted an escape all right and i was happy to give it to her we snuck across the river a few nights ago for some private time come to find out we aren't exactly alone an ogre talented and wind for sails sprang out of the forest and we were so lost in the heat of the moment we didn't notice that it was upon us it grabbed alice and disappeared into the night before i could even pull my bridges up So you abandoned her? Coward! And you suppose I should have run after the ogre with nothing but my own wing except to attack it? A lot of good that would have done us both. He measures you with his gaze. She could still be alive. I'm in no shape to go after her, but that hound looks like she, he would have copper to spare for anyone who found her. He scratches his cheeks with fingers stained red and yellow. Others around here have seen the ogre east of town. Took most of Rumble's pigs just the other day. If someone were to find it, there would be a lot of grateful people in their fault. Oh, you asshole. Yeah. 
east, but east south. Ella, have you ever woken up to find your other half used your body during the night? I don't think I understand you, and I'm not sure I want to. Well, I've found that if I go to sleep hungry enough, I wake up covered in blood and delightfully full. Let's not go that way. Please. Where is it? There it is. Let's see. Deerford Crossing. Yeah. I'm honestly feeling bad <laughs> for all of everyone picks on him. Well, he can just throw a fireball at them. Wait. No, 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 we must go down. First. What the heck? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. She's gaining even more focus as she's fighting. Yeah. I'm sorry. The good human stainless does not contain the soul of the Greg's bloodline. It does tend to project the authority to of the wielder, as the original owner intended. We have also found upgrades now. Hmm. We can cross the river here as well. Don't split just to getting to the room. Yes. Oh, that's what I meant. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, you do this. Something happened, I don't know what. Let's burn this away! Not getting through me. No oh, level up. Great. More mechanics. And I did I'm here. read it on the wiki that those skills are also usable during dialogues. So there's that. My son, do you see your sisters across the moor? Someone to do Will of Wisps, sure. And um, utility maybe. Let's see, fast runner, move speed, plus two quick item slot, plus one weapon set, um, damage reduction, damage reduction, weapon change. Hmm. Superior deflection. Oh, let's give you mental fortress. Just in case. That's a bad sign. That's a horribly bad sign. Oh. Or either rattled up as well. Defender. Plus five to all defenses except deflection. Sure. Yeah. 
Why? Yes. <laughs> Guys, just level up all at once. Please. Mm -mm, maybe wall of flame. Hmm. Let's pull off the art now. Let's give you wall of flame. And blast. Mm. Bonus third level spell. Sure. Who was next? No one. Okay. Of course. I don't think there will be an ogre here, but giant spiders. What did I say? Hey. Mind blade or amplified frost. And focus on the On the second level spell, this is what we use the most the recovery of endurance. I can see this place through your eyes. We should take care. I agree. So let's not go in here first. Let's clear with this whole cavern. Uh, by the way, Durance start kind of jumping. I'll let Margaret Fire bless this one. Yes. Of course, it's confused. Alright then. As much as I. Appreciate the confusion for enemies to help us fighting others. Oh, for fuck. Fireball. Just kill it. Hey, Durance. Just kill it. Not Shed no blood. There's a lesson to be taught. I really hate this little guy. And he's not willing to. Oh, he's recovering some interest. He doesn't have a ton of it. Something? Do you have the healing? No, you don't. So this will be the thing I'll give him on his next level up. But you don't? Uh, I don't think it's... Quit with me. Give him the shield. That uh, spirit shift steel gear. Getting for me. Okay. Oh. Uh, he okay. He turns to his humanoid. Thick webs ripple in the cavern breeze. Mummified remains are tangled with them. Oh, this is another exit. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, let's deal with this first. But you. Every time I shape shift, I wonder why I bother wearing clothes. I don't want to know.
As you advance into the darkness, the ground begins to tremble. You hear plodding footfalls, growling breaths, and bone snapping crunches. An ogre steps out of the shadows, ten feet tall and bulging with muscle. He tears a mouthful from a hoofed, pink fleshed limb and tosses it aside. He watches you from under the thick ridge of his brows. Too well equipped to be a villager, a bandit from the road then. Must be. The ogre snorts and tightens his grip around the club. <sighs> I've kept to myself, killed no one but the fools reckless enough to chase me down. Why have you come looking for me? A farmer from Deerford claims you ate his pigs. He rams a fist into the wall and roars. Then I should have eaten the blazing farmer. I underestimated the love these villagers have for the swine. Come down. Perhaps you could tell me something else. The stuffy frown deepens. Of what? I'm looking for a young elven noblewoman. She's gone missing. Cockroach's snarl reveals a row of large, stained teeth. I've done my best to avoid kith, especially the kind that might give rise to search parties. He scratches his knuckles and eyes you. She never came here. Of that I'm sure. Okay, then I'll look somewhere else. First, I want to ask you something more. He glares at the spot over your shoulder as if he expects to see someone lurking behind you. Speak fast. What are you doing in this cave? Hiding from your kind. He scratches a tusk, glaring at you. Yes, driven from their homes by strange storms, bandits out of blood for blood and coin. My kind is unsafe and unkiff at the best of times, but now tempers run hot and orc blood is valued among your alchemists. His finger flexes on his club. Hmm. The door is huge. Surely there's a better place for you to hide out. He smashes his club into the ground. You think I haven't looked? I wandered the wood from the Iskei into Kier. A spider filled cave is the best hiding spot I've found yet. He clutches his clap with both hands and draws closer. And you seem sensible enough to understand that now you've found me here, I can't let you live. This place isn't safe. Even if you kill me, it's only a matter of time before someone else finds you. He grits his teeth and glares at you, his eyes hard and narrow with rage. Korgark takes several heavy breaths, seemingly ready to charge at any second. Finally, he drops his club. That's what I was afraid of. He sighs, blasting you with his fetid breath. Time to move on, then. I have a stronghold in Ketnula. Help me defend it, and you can stay as long as you would like. Sell my service and for the shelter of a fortress. Sounds like another kind of trouble, but perhaps one I can handle. He begins shuffling back into the shadows. If you need me, you know where to find me. I'll live there for all long, for now. Ooh. Skulls and bones from an assortment of kiff and beasts litter the cavern. They've been crushed, scored, gnawed and punctured by something with fangs as thick as an Almawa finger. Um, Korkrak? But can you tell me about the girl? Oh. We got ourselves an ogre. And with that, I'm gonna end this part here, so thank you very much, <laughs> stay alive, and see you soon. Bye.